right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Nicole Leno, who is in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Nicole? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Excellent. And, uh, and Nicole uh, helps uh, entrepreneurs create magnetic brand messages and break past their limiting beliefs to achieve life changing success. And she does it using things like uh, neuro linguistic programming and rapid manifestation method, uh, etc. And what we're going to talk about today is the psychology of sales, and the mind shift that will change the way you sell and your results. Okay, so Let's get straight into it, um, into it, Nicole. So the psychology of sales, first of all, maybe baseline your, um, your concept of the psychology of sales. Well, the psychology of sales, I think that, I think when some people come into sales, they think of the perfect sales script, that there is some magic recipe. And while there is a structure that you want to take people through, it's, it's really coming at it and making sure that you're elevating it's it's the psychology that you bring into it that mm -hmm. you are bringing to the sale and then understanding the psychology that of the person that you are trying to reach and so getting past the surface level needs and wants of both of you and getting to those levels deeper where you're getting to internal problems and you're getting to the your prospect's internal problem rather than just the external problem that they can see that they know that they have. And then recognizing that you are this, you are, I would say you're the operating system. Right. And if you aren't upgraded to the level of what you want to create, then you're going to experience some bugs and some glitches along the way. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about when you say uh, the psychology that you bring to the trans to the engagement, like as a salesperson, because I think sometimes people it's, it's sort of overlook that the fact that they have their own mindset, they have their own psychology and that those are things that are actually totally within their control to change or to enhance or adapt. It's right. It's, it's, it's what you're bringing to the process and you bring mm -hmm. all of your experience and you bring all of your beliefs and all of your baggage. You also mm -hmm. bring your dreams. And yeah. sometimes we can, we can get really clouded in there where we, we get, we're, we're not doing the work on ourselves and we look at the external. We're like, I need more people. I need more followers. I need, and we're chasing these tactics and we're chasing these things outside. And we don't realize that if we just elevate our own experience and we elevate our own point of view and we work through some of the recognize, not be too afraid to look at the, the, the things that are going on inside of us that mm -hmm. are keeping us from executing in a way that will bring us something different. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a great point. And I, and I, and I do, I mean, I talk about this a lot though. I do think people don't spend enough time figuring out their, their own, the baggage that they bring, certainly, um, the triggers that, uh, that can knock you off, uh, off course. So there's a certain amount of, uh, of self-awareness work you need to do in order to be successful. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, you are the operating system. So mm. you are, you are the thing powering all of it. And I always say that, you know, there's, I teach the, I, I, I teach the tactical strategies, plus mm -hmm. I teach the mystical side, which is more the, the, the squishier stuff and the more, the, the more soft skills and the things of understanding who you are, because we're always looking for these tactics. We're looking for this external solution to our problem. Meanwhile, it's, it's really about what, and what's interesting is, so I know a lot of people buy, they might've had a coach, you might have a program, you might mm -hmm. have these, these, these things that are there for you, these tools that quote unquote, never worked. And then you do some work on yourself and suddenly they work. It right. isn't the tool. It is the operator of the tool. So when you start recognizing that and start diving into how you are operating, who you are being, in your sales conversations, in your business, that's when things start to change. That's what takes you from, because you can muscle your way so far, which is why we see some strong arm ta sales tactics. We see the people and everyone kind of like, so those people might be successful because they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of gobbling up maybe the more vulnerable market. 
And right. there's a lot of that out there. Um, and, but no one really wants to be that in general. Mm. <laughs> and, and most people yeah. look at it and they're like, no, 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 I want to be that slick salesperson that just kind of made me feel so comfortable. And I was just handing my money over to them and I trusted them implicitly. And we all want to be that. And, and that comes from a great sense of self and mm -hmm. bringing that energy into those conversations. So that's fascinating. So how do, how do you, when you, when you work with people, how do you help them develop that sense of self? And what are some of the things that they need to focus on? Because I, I agree with you. I think there's oftentimes, you know, people have all the tools, they have all the training, they have everything, but they just, for some reason, it just isn't, it doesn't come together. And the, the missing piece is the piece that you're talking about. So I always look at, you know, again, it's going those levels deeper, right? Mm -hmm. So, so someone will say to me, they'll come to me and they'll say, I need more people. And, right. you know, and then it's very, very classic. We look at it and we're like, <laughs> I, I only have a thousand people in my right. following, or I only have, and it's like, that's a thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, even if you got 10% of those, like, you know, like hundred people, how does that change your life? And so we tend to look at the lack and not, at, and not look at what we have. So I always tell people, you know, write down what you want and then look at how it's already in your life. Look at how you're already, it, it already exists. And then look at why you won't walk in that direction. So we say we need more people. Okay, let's look at the people that we have. Now, if I told you to go ask them to sign up with you, I told you to reach out to all of them. A lot of times there's some resistance there. I don't want to be mm -hmm. salesy. I don't want to be this. That's, this is how we start to get to those beliefs. And we can start, we start like scratching at that surface and getting to that level deeper. And a lot of times it comes down to beliefs were formed when we were very young. So it does require a little bit of work and some soul searching to figure out where the root of that is. That's why I use the, the rapid manifestation method, which they've actually changed. It's called the rapid relief method now, um, which uses tapping where we can get to the root and pull it out rather than intellectually knowing something. So an example I have is that that same example of I need more people go reach out to them. We have mm -hmm. hesitation there. Um, a lot of thing that comes, a lot of things that come up for people is, um, is the, the fear of trusting people that they right. have been let down that, and that can come from the playground when you were six sure. yeah, yeah. and it's just, it's in there. And when you're a child, you know, it's like having a, it's like the house with all the windows open stuff is just coming in and unfiltered. And, and then it's becoming the environment that we live in. And that's kind of, and then that stays with us. So not judging that, but looking at that from that perspective and then we would work on removing that belief and that story that's around it because you are carrying that into your conversations. You're carrying that into the way that you operate. So I always say like, write down the three things that are the most important things for you to do, the biggest needle movers in your business, and then write down why. And then when you go to do them, write down how you feel and why you can't execute when you've identified something you can't execute that's an area we need to work on yeah no i think that's fascinating because absolutely when you can identify your areas of resistance i think obviously then you can start to to overcome them and i do think it's it is it is incredible how you can carry these things as you said like it can come from childhood they can come from anything i mean you know if you're in sales let's face it i mean you've grown up on a diet of anytime sales is portrayed in popular culture it's portrayed in a negative way so it's 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 not you know even on a macro level it's not hard to believe why why some sales people have a negative opinion of themselves Absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and just recognizing those stories and, and from a neutral place, like I always say, mm -hmm. exchange criticism for curiosity right. and you will go far. So when you start becoming very curious about why you think a certain way or why you had a thought and paying very, very close attention to your feelings, because sometimes the thought won't be as obvious to you because we're so used to having them. They say that you have the, the statistic is we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts we thought yesterday. So yeah. what's the, the, the lesson there? We're, we're running a program. Only 10% of our thoughts are new, which means there's only 10% chance of us creating something new because we're doing right. the same thing over and over again. We don't know it. So paying very close attention to what triggers you. 
what in your body feels wrong feels when do you feel anger when do you feel when do you feel a knot in your stomach or just that that feeling of dread we know what that feels like in our body paying really close attention to that because that resistance will clue you into the beliefs that are underneath that and there are some that don't feel that they're they're surprising to you i mean we uncover things all the time and doing work like what I do with the, the EFT and, and the tapping process, it can, it can just loosen you up, get to the subconscious state so that all of a sudden a belief comes up and you're like, wow, I didn't even know that was in there. An example I have is a, um, something my father used to say was, if you're not going to do it well, don't bother doing it at all. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wondered why I had both perfectionism and procrastination issues and I had trouble finishing things and I had to really work on it. And when I started to clear that out, once even just knowing it gave me the sense of relief where I could see it come up now and I, and I worked through it and it's magical how you're not just getting different results, the ease at which you're able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish and go through life is just, it's life-changing. Yeah, and I think for anyone uh, listening or watching is, I think that that's a really important point there about the, the fact that there's always a phys there is a physiological reaction, right? And that is your clue. If you're looking, if you're looking to start to, you know, maybe do a little bit of an investigation, then those physical, those physiological reactions will give you clues as that there's something happening. And, and yeah, exactly. And paying attention to that and writing down, what was it that triggered you? What was it? Mm -hmm. Cause they're not non sequiturs. They might feel that way, yeah. but there's something there. And, and if you can get to the, you know, why, why are you so upset that your spouse left the clothes on the floor? Why mm -hmm. are you so upset that your kids left everything a mess? Why are you so upset? The underlying belief there, you know, if you recognize that you get worked up your adrenaline starts pumping, you start to feel really angry. The belief there might be that I have to do this all. Why do I have to do everything? Why mm -hmm. is it always on me? And if you get to that, why won't you succeed? Why can't you move forward? Why can't you make those phone calls? It might be because if I succeed, then none of this will ever get done. And I'm the rock. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I and I think that those are incredibly incredibly important things, and 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 really life changing when you can start to see when you can start to recognize some of those, uh, uh, because yeah, it's um, it, it's those things it's those things that you you are often surprised by your reaction to. I mean, later on, you know, you be might be surprised like, well, you know, why did I get so upset about like a few items of clothing on the floor when I could easily just pick them up and throw them in the the hamper. Because it's, it's a sign and, and, you know, and the triggers are a gift and mm -hmm. be thankful for them. If you use them and you clear them out, then suddenly those things don't bother you anymore. If you are mm -hmm. triggered by something, then there's something in you that it's just pointing to some wound, some spot that needs to be healed. And you'll be surprised at how healing something like socks on the floor, pissing you off, <laughs> how that how that changes how you show up in your business because one you know it might be just going to your spouse and saying i need help around here mm -hmm. and when you do that that shifts how you see your ability to succeed because you have help you feel supported you're able to receive yeah. in different ways yeah and and then when you take that into as you said into a business context then when you're in a you know when maybe you're having a, a sales interaction and you know, somebody says something that you're not expecting, or there some objection comes up, you know, it's very easy then to retreat back into feeling, feeling vulnerable, and then defensive. Definitely. And I, and I think just one thing when we're talking about going back into like the business mm -hmm. side of it, and, and, and how it is when you're sitting across the table from somebody or sitting on a zoom, and you're on a call, you doing this work and understanding how you operate, you will see it in your prospects. You will see it in your potential clients and you will be able to point out things to them that will blow their minds. You will be able to point out their blind spots, which if you are a coach, if you are somebody who helps people grow in some way, that is ultimately what will deliver 
people will pay for that value. You're showing me something mm -hmm. I can't see myself. And suddenly you yeah. can put a new price on that. No, no, 100%. I always tell this story, actually, uh, but I was fortunate to um, to run an organization called Hothwig a number of years ago, which was spin, based on spin selling, the Neil Rackham's, uh, Neil Rackham's uh, groundbreaking book and research. And um, Neil always used to say about that if you can create enough, you, you should look to create so much value in a sales interaction that the person would write you a check for that sales interaction, not even for what you're selling, just for the sales interaction. And I always thought this was a great concept and a great story and everything. But to be honest, I was still, you know, still a little skeptical. Would somebody really write your check for this? So I I brought Neil himself one time to a, a, a very, a very well-known uh, company um, in, in the, in, well, it doesn't matter what industry they're in, any anyway, very well-known company. <laughs> And the, and the CEO and the whole of the sales leadership and the marketing leadership all together, about like 15 people in a room and Neil, and we were there, they were really at each other's throats, sales and marketing, yeah, go figure. And anyway, at the, end of the, at the end of the few hours we spent there, the CEO was so grateful and thankful about what happened. So then I thought, here's my opportunity. I said, can I ask you a question? I said, was there enough value created today here today just in this interaction that if we invoiced you for this for this meeting, would you pay it? And the CEO sat there for a moment and said, you know, I actually would. Hmm. It's incredible, right? You know, and it's it's delivering value is the key. And we get very caught up. And again, this is going back to the way that we think about things. So if we're told that the answer is to deliver value, what keeps people from delivering value is the way that they think about the way it will be perceived. And we think about, you know, well, I, well, what if I deliver too much? Will they not buy? <laughs> that is, it's not the thing we, we told you what to do. I told you to go out and deliver value, but you won't do it because you're too busy thinking about it. And you have beliefs about what delivering value will mean for your result. So this is how this, it, it, it's, it's a much bigger thing. And the, the beauty of it is though, is you get to be, you, you not only get to make more money and have more success and you, you get to be more you by doing this work and ultimately you, you live a better life. I mean, this has trickled out into my entire family and, and all of my interactions. Yeah. And, and I think the, the other thing too, is that it allows you to be authentic. And I think, mm -hmm. and I think there's a huge craving for that. I think people crave authenticity. I mean, and especially we've been through such a, a strange period over the last while mm -hmm. that I, I think it's, it's, allowed people to sort of relook at their lives a little bit even if they didn't want to they <laughs> it's it was kind of forced upon them but i think now there's a craving for authenticity and i think if you can as you're talking here if you can get past some of these barriers and actually be more of yourself and be more confident and, and more kind of uh you know self-aware then you can you can you can really engage people in a way that they want to be engaged a hundred percent. It's, and that's the biggest struggle for a lot of people. People come to me trying to be more authentic and they don't know why <laughs> they can't be. And the reason that you can't be is you have beliefs about how you will be perceived and it's, and it's vulnerable, trusting people, all of that comes up and is the stuff that we work on so that you can put out the message that you were born to put out and live the life you were meant to live. Yeah. And as, as you said, I mean, it's, uh, it, you know, when you said sometimes, I mean, it sounds a little bit, um, you know, esoteric, but the fact is, it's not, it's very, very, very practical. It's very practical. And that's where I like, I, <laughs> I, I always, I always say that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a type A hippie. So I, <laughs> I really love tactics, strategies, I nothing, very few things give me more pleasure than checking things off of a list and getting to the next milestone. Like I'm, I'm just super jazzed about that, but I couldn't, I couldn't strategy my way to where I wanted to go. It forced me into this side of the work, which I believe I was meant to find. And I present it to my people and, and I deliver it by, you know, by breaking it down into very strategic step-by-step -step terms. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like, you know, we make a list. 
I want you to grade that list by how, how does this make you feel on a scale of one to 10? And we go through that. And when you can be methodical about it, it really points it out exactly where it is. Otherwise it can get lost in the living because again, yeah. we you, going into uncomfortable spaces, we don't really want to go there. So it's easier to block it out when you, when you write them out and we go through it with a process, like you put a real process to it. it it's, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. And, and that's a good point just to, just to underline there that, yeah, uh, there are places that maybe you don't want to go to and maybe your brain will actually even like try and prevent you going there. Maybe you'll manifest in, in pain or ailments or whatever, because you know, you, they, there's these self-defense mechanisms built into, into our body. Um, but the reality is like, once you do go through there, it's not as scary as you think. And, and it, as you have said before, like it, a lot of things fall away then and you become more clear minded and you become that person that people want to engage with. I want to, when somebody sells to me, I want them to be confident and passionate. I want them to share, share, I, you know, stories of what they've done with other people. You know, I want to, I want to, be, you know, when somebody engages me, I want to believe them. Yep. And, and that's, that's the power. I mean, that, that's what I love to do. I love the transformation. I love seeing people go because I think that that's why entrepreneurship is, I think we take a step in there because we feel like we're made for more. We believe that there's greater potential for us out there. And then, but living that greater potential, we come up with, we come up against all of this other stuff. And when mm -hmm. you start peeling away those layers and you start making it easier for people to put out who they are and own the fact that they've got some magic to share. That is a beautiful thing to behold. And like I said, you know, and, and there's a process for it. Like I, we, I give processes for it because I do better with processes. So I right. tend to, you know, I come from a corporate background. I I've taken that, all of those strategies and implemented them in a way where it's like, this is a digestible process that you can go through to becoming better to becoming right. more authentic. Absolutely. Well, listen, and Nicole, this has been fascinating. It's a, a great conversation. All of Nicole's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the work you do. Sure. So I, I thank you so much for having me on. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. Um, I, like I said, my name is Nicole Leno. I am an intuitive business and visibility coach. I help people find their magic. I help entrepreneurs find their magic and put a process in place to create the life that they want to create, to create the business that they want to create. So we actually work on sales strategy and on visibility content creation and putting out a message that is aligned with you and brings in sales. So creating that magnetic brand. Um, I have a Facebook group where we share all of this, which I know that will be linked up in the show notes. It's called Unlock Your Inner CEO. And then my website is nicolelano.me. Um, you can keep in touch with me there. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You should just have that is like, I help you find your magic. I think that's perfect. It's, uh, it, it's such a, because I think I agree with you. I think everybody has the magic in them. They just need it to, to be unlocked. Uh, listen, um, Nicole, this was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.